one. Let us discuss this example. So we have a function d which is defined as d of x is equal to mod x minus y. It is defined on r. That means we take elements from r which are real numbers. Getting? We are going to prove it is a metric on r. Do you know how to prove any function is a metric on r? We have to prove that it satisfies four properties. Then we can declare it is a metric on r. So let us start to prove it is a metric on r. Okay. So I will start. Uh, to discuss the first property. The first property is d of x, y is always greater than or equal to 0. So consider d of x, y. Definition says its value is mod x minus y. So you, we are familiar with definition of mod. Mod a is equal to plus minus a. If it is positive, then we will have a. But if it is negative, we have minus a. That means mod a always gives non-negative value. So that's why obviously mod is there. So it is greater than or equal to zero. And this is true for all x, y belongs to R. So that's why we get d of x, y is greater than or equal to zero. The first property is satisfied here. Let us discuss the second property. Second property, we will start with d of x, y is equal to zero. Actually, the second property is d of x, y is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y. This thing we have to prove d of x y is equal to 0 if and only if I'm using the definition of d here it is mod x minus y is equal to 0 will you tell me mod of any number is 0 that means that means that number is also 0 since mod of 0 is 0 we know so therefore mod of x minus y is 0 it indicates x minus y is also 0 what I'm going to do I'm going to shift y on that side so we will have if and only if x is equal to y. So we started with d of x, y is equal to 0 and finally we got if and only if x is equal to y. So in this way we proved the second property. Let us discuss the third property that is symmetry d of x, y is equal to d of y. x. This thing we have to prove. So let me prove it here. So I will start with for x, y belongs to r d of x, y. So the definition says d of x, y is equal to mod x minus y. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take minus sign common. So if you take minus sign common, you will have y minus x. You can simplify and check. If you solve the bracket minus y minus minus plus x, that means again you will have x minus y. So I have written the same thing in a different way. But we know that mod of minus a is same as mod a. Since mod of minus 5 is 5 and mod of 5 is also 5. So if you have minus sign inside mod doesn't matter, it will give the same value. So that's why I can apply this result of mod here. So you can consider this bracket as a getting. So mod of minus x y minus x that is nothing but mod y minus x. No need to consider that minus sign using this result we can write. Okay. So mod y minus x is nothing but mod y minus x is nothing but d of y x since mod x minus y is uh, d of x y is equal to mod x minus y so mod y minus x is nothing but d of y x so basically we started with d of x y finally we got d of y x so in this way we proved the third property that is symmetry let us prove the last property that is frangel inequality so fourth property so uh, i will start with for let me write here for x y z belongs to r since for tri triangle inequality we ne need to have three points so i have considered start with d of x z i will follow the definition so definition says d of x z is equal to mod x minus z i'm going to do a small adjustment that is i'm going to adjust plus y minus y so it will be like this mod x minus y plus y minus z Okay, see there is no more space to write. So make a screenshot of it after that we will go further. So let us continue. So what I, I'm going to continue it here. So we have the property mod a plus b less than or equal to mod a plus mod b. So this is Frangel inequality of mod which we have already proved in first year. Okay, so that first year property in properties of real number we have already discussed. So that property I'm going to use here. You can consider x minus y as our a and this y minus z as our b. So if you apply this property here, so we will have this is less than or equal to mod x minus y 
plus mod y minus z. I hope all of you understood. I have considered this is my a and this is my b. Getting so by applying this result, we have got this one. So shall I write the same thing in a definition of d again using definition of d? What can we write? This is equal to d of x y since mod x minus y is nothing but d of x y. And what about this d of y minus z? That means what I supposed to write? This is d of y z. Okay, so therefore, let me write the conclusion. Therefore, okay, it is not required. Now let me remove it. Uh, just a minute. Huh? I will remove it. So this is okay. It is removed now. Hmm? So basically, we started with d of x z. Okay, and finally, this inequality we got, and we proved this is less than or equal to d of x y plus d of y z. And this is true for all x, y, z belongs to R, right? So in this way, we proved our D satisfies all four properties of metric. So therefore, we can declare D is a metric on R. So therefore, D is metric on R. That is the same thing we can write. R D is a matrix space or is a matrix space so you can also call it as a usual matrix on r this d this d is known as is known as usual matrix on r so this is very important thing I told you here. Since in the future we are going to use, we will call it as usual matrix on R. That means this D, D of X, Y is equal to mod X minus Y. So in this way we proved D is a matrix on R. So when we have a problem where we have to prove it is a matrix on R, then we have to prove that that function satisfies all four properties. But when they ask to prove that it is not a metric, then it is enough to prove that D does not satisfy a single property. Okay, we have to find out that property which D does not satisfy. Then we can declare D is not a metric on R if uh, such question is asked. Okay, so I hope all of you understood. Make a screenshot of it. After that, we will stop. Thank you. Bye bye.